Tom, are you going to comment on the badger? <laughs> 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 Any more questions? Oh, we're in the same section. Hi, I just wanted to make a comment because um, I was on the shoot of we were shooting this. I just wanted to make a point about how, how hard it was to get these cameras to match. Because basically, when we were exposing, we were using false color. So basically, we were making sure the focal exposure was the same, kind of, you know, as, as best we could. But it's quite interesting for me, having seen this for the first time, to actually see how different they are and see the things that we couldn't see, even though we had a massive monitor there. We were all looking at it and really scrutinizing it, you know, seeing that mm. there's a flare on one, there's a speck here that you can't see on the other one, there's lens flares. So yeah, just a general point about how difficult I think it is to try and kind of rein everything in and really be on it on a shoot. How did you find Paul's the DIP by the way, who was on it, so it was his first time shooting a scenario. And Sorry then, Russell, can we give you a microphone? Yeah, you, you because <laughs> So, um, so um, yeah, so <laughs> hi, Paul. Paul's my business partner. This is weird. Um, yeah, so Paul was the DIP on the shoot, so it was his first time shooting stereo, with obviously then having Campbell and the guys basically kind of nursing him through it. So I mean, you might have some really interesting perspectives on it. So it's probably worth just kind of having a quick general couple of comments. Well, I guess we'll come to that later, really. But, but I mean, my, my, my we, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll get my coat. But I mean, basically, the general thing is that just it's really interesting seeing this, and I guess I'm responsible for the amount of work that. To put into fixing these plates. Yes, and you it's are. Just, uh, <laughs> it's just really interesting seeing how different they were when we tried so hard to, you know, make sure that everything's perfect. It's just a general thing. Because really. the monitoring's quite difficult, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, really difficult. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask about the monitoring that you did on set, and and if if someone could tell us just a rough breakdown of what you had as monitoring. I know you mentioned there was JVC monitor and stuff, but you really did for a client. Okay. But I just want to know a little bit more about what we were seeing and, you know, do you guys ever do analog link monitoring or do you do polarise or how does it all work and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so the, um, the SI3D system gives us a bunch of different monitoring modes. Um, we're using a 46-inch JVC on set um, just for sort of the overall 3D impression. Um, the, yeah, the 3D modes we have, we have anaglyph, um, which we're probably using um, at the camera, we're using that most of the time. Um, we also have split screen modes, put the sort of left half of the left screen, left eye against the right half of the right eye, uh, a wiggle mode, overlay, so there's loads of options. Um, we've also got grids, align, uh, uh, parallax grids to overlay that can, that can show how, how much parallax that we have uh, in a sort of given area of the image. Um, and then things like dual histograms, so I mean, uh, as, as Paul was saying, it, it was difficult to to match the exposures perfectly, but we probably did it as well as as well as we could have done um, uh, with all sort of the, the features that the SIs have available. Um, I mean, it's worth mentioning that that, that um, we weren't shooting with top end film lenses on this, which is why it's you know, slightly softer than um, than it might otherwise be. But it's it, you know, it's um, the SI system definitely gives us the sort of best monitoring possible. Hi, so this is another, another camera and shoot question. Um, having seen the issues that po the polarization differences between the two, two eyes give, um, is there, has, has anyone looked at a way, or is it possible to actually polarize the camera that isn't being polarized by the mirror? Um, has, has that been tried and does that improve the issues there? I know uh, a lot of people have looked at this and um, for big features when they've run against it all the time and, and, and the three LT guys, the pace guys, neither of those have managed to crack it. I think you potentially could crack it, but you'd be throwing away even more light, um, which you don't really want to do with a mirror rig. Um, having gone through this a few times, um, <clears throat> when you go to your hire company for your cameras, don't get them just to reset it to zero or to default values. Get them to spend half a day matching the two cameras up colorimetry-wise. That will save you a lot of time. And also now there's a trend to try and get matched lenses, or at least get lenses that are close to each other than just two next to each other on the shelf. Again, this will um, save you time later. So a bit of kind of pre-planning and pre-thought with your rental company. 
will save you a lot of time in person. Any further questions? Oh, one over here. Thank you, yeah, sorry, going back to uh, cameras again. Just a, maybe a, a silly question, but why isn't the colour correction being done at the time you're actually filming it? Um, I mean, it, it's possible, yeah, but th these cameras are actually shooting raw, so there's no colour information in the metadata. So you can't, you can't actually do that in a live situation? Yeah, you, you can do, yeah. There were specific hardware available to do it in a live situation. Um, you, you can get sometimes with mirrors, even colour shifts throughout the image. It's not, not always consistent throughout the image. OK, thank you. Uh, one other thing to mention is it's, uh, it can often depend on the quality of the mirror using the mirror rig. Now, it's not a particularly expensive mirror. It's about £1,000 worth of glass. And the the, the high-end ones cost 10 times that. Um, and it, the mirror here has introduced pretty much all of the, the colour difference you see between the left eye and right eye. If this was a side-by-side -side rig, you wouldn't be seeing any of that, or very, very little. Any more hands? Very good question. Which um, mirror rig were you using? Uh, it was a PNS Technic rig, the, the standard one that they released a year or so ago. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, okay, I'm going to say thank you to Theo then, and thank you to Anishin for answering all those questions. <laughs>